In this video I'm going to cover Mike Zimmer's new Google Fonts browser, which provides the same filtering options you might be familiar with from searching Google Fonts directly. I'll finish by showing how Mike Zimmer builds the URL for loading only the fonts you have used in your design, including style variations and language subsets, so you can forget about managing that yourself. Mike Zimmer's new font browser has a search field, so if you know the font you're looking for, you can quickly find it with instant search. The category checkboxes make it easier to narrow your search to just handwriting fonts, for example. To reinstate the full set of fonts, just click the Clear Filters link. Fonts are sorted by popularity by default, but you might choose to sort by the number of styles if you need a font that supports many different boldness and italic settings. For those who don't have much experience working with font variations, I'll demonstrate with a quick example. If we apply the regular weighted variation of Barlow to our page heading, we can still make the text bold by setting the font weight property to 700. The browser is capable of stretching the thickness of the letters, but this is known as faux weighting. It's an automatic render process by the browser rather than a deliberate adjustment by the font designer. To render Barlow text as bold as the font designer intended, we should select the bold variation from the drop-down menu before clicking the Use Font button. Notice how it changes. If that was a bit quick, let's go back to the regular variation using the Recent Styles menu. And then back to the bold variation again. By loading the correct variation, we end up with a nicer looking font that is more crisply defined around the edges of the letters. The same is true for italics. With only the bold variation loaded, we can render faux italic text by setting the font style property to italic, but it will look better if we load the bold and italic variation of Barlow. The final filtering option is for language subsets. To demonstrate this feature, I will first create a selector for targeting the Hebrew text below the main heading. By default, Google includes the Latin subset for a given font, if it's available. But if you need characters for another language, like Hebrew script, you can select Hebrew from the language filter to see all available fonts that support Hebrew. Mike Thema's preview text is always in English, but you can enter any text in any language. Use the Apply to all fonts option to make Mike Thema remember your custom text, as well as apply it to all visible fonts. This option is also handy for applying your preferred font size to all fonts. When a language filter is enabled, MicroThemer will include the language subset in brackets when applying the font. In case you're wondering, the text in between the brackets isn't written to MicroThemer's style sheet. Instead, it is used when MicroThemer constructs the URL for loading the fonts. For backwards compatibility and edge cases, the option for manually setting Google font subsets is still exists in MicroThemer's preferences. Any subsets defined here will be included with the subsets Microthema discovers in brackets in the GUI fields. Let's finish by reviewing the URL Microthema generates for loading Google Fonts. The URL includes the bold italic variation of Barlow, which is needed for styling the main heading, and the regular variation of Rubik with the Hebrew subset for styling the text below the heading. If I now clear the Rubik font setting, Microthema will remove the Rubik font and Hebrew subset from the URL, so it never loads more fonts than we need for our design. This makes experimenting with different Google fonts really quick and easy. And that concludes this tutorial. If any of you can think of improvements to make the Google fonts feature even better, I'll be looking out for your comments in the forum. Thanks for watching.